In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the beginning steps of my editing process, including how I'm setting up my Premiere Pro for a smoother editing workflow. Welcome back to the channel, Filmmaking Homies. It's your boy, Cody Blue, and like I said, today we're just gonna walk you guys through those beginning steps of kinda getting the ball rolling with Premiere Pro. So I'll show you guys how I'm importing and storing my footage, how I'm interpreting it to 24 frames per second, how I'm setting up my timeline, and all that other stuff that you might wanna know as far as getting started with your edit. So for those of you guys that are more on the beginner side, I'm sure you'll find this tutorial very helpful, but even those of you guys that are a little bit more advanced, I'm sure you can pick up a couple different tips and tricks that'll help you improve your workflow. So with that being said, a fair warning, this isn't going to be the most entertaining video that I've ever made, but I'm sure you guys will learn something. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and we'll check it out. Today we're just going to kind of walk you guys through my process of getting my footage onto my computer and how I set up my Premiere Pro and some of the keyboard shortcuts and different things like that that I'm using in order to improve my workflow and make the editing process a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's say that I just got back from a shoot and the first thing I'm going to do is import my footage onto my computer. So I plug in my SD card, I'm going to open up my folder and I'm actually going to make two copies of all of my footage. So the first copy I'm going to put on my Samsung T5 solid state hard drive. Now, if you guys aren't editing off of a solid state hard drive, I would highly recommend it, whether it's internal on your computer or it's an external like the Samsung T5. It's just gonna speed up your workflow a little bit. And I think it's a worthwhile investment. It helps you edit quicker. And ultimately it's gonna help you guys make more videos. So what I do is I go into my editing folder. I'm gonna create a new folder. We'll just call it tutorial. And then what I would do is drop all of my footage into this tutorial folder. Once that's completed, I'm gonna make a copy of this tutorial folder, and I'm gonna take it onto my actual four terabyte hard drive and just put it in my A7 III videos folder. So I go A7 III videos, and then I'll just paste the footage into my storage hard drive. That way I have two copies. Now that I've got all of my footage onto my computer, it's time to jump into Premiere Pro. So we'll go down to Premiere Pro, and this is what your Premiere Pro is gonna look like when you first open it up if you haven't made any changes to your workspace or anything like that. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is the workspace that I like to use for editing my footage. So I really only use the editing tab and the color tab for everything. And this is the way that I set them up for my editing process. So basically I want all of my controls up in this left-hand corner. I want my timeline all the way across the bottom. And then I'm gonna have my program or my actual editing window on the right-hand side here. And the reason I like that is because I like to have a lot of real estate when it comes to my timeline. I like to be able to see all my clips and different things like that. And this bottom left hand corner here is just kind of ruining that for me. So what I'm going to do is drag all the tools that I actually use up into the top left hand corner. So we'll go ahead and drag this project up here. Media browser I don't use. So I'm going to close that. Libraries I don't use. Info I don't use. Effects I'm going to drag up here right next to effects controls just like that. Markers I don't use and history I do not use. Now there are a couple of different things that I wanna add to this so that I have all the tools that I'm gonna be using for my edit. So I don't use the audio clip mixer and I don't use the metadata. Now I'm gonna go up to window and add back some of the things that I do use. So I do use the essential graphics for all of my titles and text and different things like that. So we'll add that. And then again, I'm just gonna drag that over to this top left panel here. Next, I'm gonna add essential sound. Occasionally I use essential sound, not very often, but I do like to have it on there just in case. Now, the last thing I'm gonna add is my audio track mixer, which I use for basically equalizing my sound, my dialogue and different things like that. So I do use that occasionally, although not very often. And then I just wanna make sure the size is appropriate there. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna go into window workspaces and save changes to this workspace. So now my editing workspace will always be set up exactly the way I want it. Next, we're gonna do the same thing to the color workspace here. So we'll come into color. I'm gonna close this libraries panel. I wanna make sure my timeline is nice and big. And then I'm just gonna make sure I have everything that I need up here. I have my scopes. I don't need audio clip mixer. And that's pretty much all I need when it comes to actual color grading is my program, my source, and effects, effects controls, and lumetri scopes. I do keep effects and effects controls on there just in case I wanna make some changes to effects while I'm going through my color. 
So now I'm gonna go to window again, workspaces and save changes to this workspace. So now you guys have your editing and color workspaces set up exactly the same way that I do. Now there's a couple more little things I wanna show you guys before we actually import our footage. That's just gonna kinda help you guys speed up your workflow a tiny bit more. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to file, project settings and general and make sure you're using your GPU if you have one um, or OpenCL or OpenGL. Software only is going to be the slowest option. So hopefully you're editing with a GPU or something. I use the GPU CUDA. So make sure GPU is selected to speed up your editing workflow a little bit. Now we're gonna go up to edit, preferences and memory. So here we wanna make sure we have some RAM reserved for other applications, but I'm not sure what it sets to at the default. So my computer has 16 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna reserve four gigs of RAM for other applications. If you have more RAM installed on your computer, maybe like 32 gigs, you might bump this up to six gigs or so, but I think for most people, four gigs is gonna be enough unless you're doing a lot of work between After Effects and Premiere Pro. So those are just a couple of little tweaks that I can recommend for you guys to make sure that your Premiere Pro is running as fast as possible. So now let's go ahead and import some footage and talk about that process. What I'm gonna do is go into my solid state hard drive. You wanna make sure you're pulling your footage from your solid state hard drive. I'm gonna go into my editing folder and I'm just gonna pull some footage from that Milky Way tutorial that I did for you guys. So we'll just grab a couple of these and we'll call that good. So I'm gonna drag these into my project panel and let those clips import. So now all of our footage is imported. And if you guys are anything like me, you're shooting in a bunch of different frame rates. We're either shooting in 120 frames per second or 24 frames per second, whatever it is, you have different frame rates among all of your footage. So we wanna conform all of those to the same frame rate. So what I'm gonna do is just select all of my clips and then I'm going to right click I'm gonna to go to modify, interpret footage, and I'm gonna interpret this footage to 23.976, which is technically 24 frames per second. Click enter, and now all of our footage is 24 frames per second. I'm gonna take one of my clips, I'm gonna drag it to this little icon here in order to create a new timeline. Then I'm gonna go up to sequence, sequence settings, and change it into a 1440p project, which is 2560 by 1440. Make sure it says 16 by nine here and it's gonna be 23.976 frames per second. So we'll go ahead and click okay. And now we have our timeline set up and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this clip for now. And now there's a couple different ways that you can choose the selects for your footage. A lot of people like to double click, come into their clip, find the good part, enter I, find the next part, and enter O, and then they can go ahead and drag that into their timeline. So if you wanna drag the clip and the audio, you just click in the middle here and drag that down. Go ahead and click keep existing settings. Or if you wanna drag just the video, you just click this little video icon here and drag that down into your timeline instead. So you could go through every single clip that way and choose your selects, but that's not the way that I like to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And then what I'm gonna do is grab all of my clips. I'm gonna go ahead and drag those into my timeline and then I'm going to click keep existing settings. So that's just gonna make sure our sequence settings don't change. I'm gonna highlight all of the clips. Then I'm going to right click and scale to frame size. That way my 4K clips are 1440p and my 1080p clips are also 1440p. Now the way I like to choose my selects for my footage is I just go through the clips this way. I find the good part, I push Q and then I find the end and I push W. So in order to make sure the Q and W options work for you, let's go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and we're gonna set Q as the ripple trim previous edit to playhead. And we're gonna select W as ripple trim next edit to playhead. So if you just search ripple, you'll find them. Ripple trim next edit to playhead is W. Ripple trim previous edit to playhead is Q. So we'll go ahead and make sure those are set and then we can call all of our footage. So again, I'm just gonna come through, Q to start there and W to end here. Now on the longer clips, I like to drag through first just to see kind of what I'm dealing with in case there's two good parts in one clip. So say I wanted to keep this part, so I'm gonna push Q and then I want it to end here, but I might wanna use some more of the clip. So what I'm gonna do is actually control K and now I'll have two separate clips out of this one clip. So I'll go ahead and drag through to the next good part. Say we wanna start here, I'll push Q I'll drag a little bit forward until about there and I'll push W. Now we're on to the next clip. This clip is no good. I'm gonna delete it onto the next one. This clip is no good, delete it. This one I'll start here. I'm gonna come all the way 
and end here. So this is the way that I'm going through all of my footage. Even if I have 500 clips, I'm going through them one by one, choosing the good parts, deleting the bad clips, and that way it helps refresh my memory on what clips I have. And then when I go into edit, I'll remember those clips. I'll say, oh yeah, I had a really good shot of this and I can just go find it in my timeline and put it into my edit. So let's go ahead and say that we've gone through all of our footage, we've picked all of our selects, and now it's time to actually start our edit. Now in today's video, I'm not gonna walk you guys through my actual editing process. I'll save that for another video, but I do wanna show you guys how to get started with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another sequence with one of my clips. So I'm gonna grab the clip here, I'm gonna drag it to my new sequence button, and then I'm gonna again change it to a 1440p sequence. So 2560 by 1440. And then I'm going to delete this clip here. Now I like to name them just so I don't get confused. So I'm gonna name this one, edit, and I'm gonna name my previous sequence footage. Now you can see here we have our footage and we have our edit. Now we've got both sequences and we're ready to actually start editing. So this is when I would drop in my music and start putting my footage together. Now the way that I do that is I go into my footage panel here, I'll find the clip that I want and I'll drag it to my editing timeline and just drop it into my edit. Again, keep existing settings and scale to frame size. So that's one way that you could do it is just by clicking back and forth. But for me, I actually like to bring my footage down below my editing timeline. That way I can see them both at the same time. So I'm gonna scale this up and I'm gonna scale this one down because I really don't need to see that much aside from the clips here. So I'll drag this audio down so that all I can see is the video and we'll have something like that. So now I can edit directly from here. I can click here, find the clips that I want and just drag them straight up into my timeline. So we'll talk more about my actual editing process in a future video, but now you guys have your Premiere Pro set up and you know how I'm working with it in order to edit my videos. So there you go guys, that's my entire process as far as getting everything started and ready to edit in Premiere Pro. Now keep in mind, I will be doing a part two to this video eventually where we'll talk about how to actually edit in Premiere Pro. So I'll walk you guys through that entire process as well, but that's it for today's video. So do me a favor, like this video if you like it, subscribe if you wanna see more. If you have any questions, send me a DM on Instagram, but until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, peace out.